Hello traders, this is Avanesh from TradersArcade.com. Today we will take a look at a list of stocks that are hitting a new one-year high. Um, new one-year high or 52-week high is generally means that there's more good news on these stocks to come. Uh, a lot of new beginners and novice traders uh, feel that when the stock hits a new one-year high, the stock is expensive and they don't want to buy it. But expert traders know that when the stock hits a 52-week high, uh, we know that there's more gains to come following the 52-week highs. So saying that, here's the list of stocks. They're segregated by category that hit the 52-week high uh, last week. So there's stocks that are related to 5G technology. There's stocks that are related to auto chips. Uh, there's stocks that are related to semiconductors, cloud technology, media play, utilities, fintech, finance, defense, and consumer staples. So let's go look at these stocks sector by sector. Uh, what are some of the stocks that are hitting a new one-year high uh, that are related to 5G technology? Again, 5G technology is um, going to make our cell phones smarter, faster. Uh, the whole world is looking uh, for this 5G, 5G technology to catch up. Um, Qualcomm is one of those companies that is in the center of 5G technology. So Qualcomm just finished a settlement with Apple where Apple decided to pay Qualcomm about $6 billion, which, um, which made the stock go up higher. And apart from that, Qualcomm is also heavily, heavily invested in the 5G technology sector. So Apple and Qualcomm will bring us a 5G phone. Uh, it might not be this year, it might be next year, but still, this is one of those stocks that is poised uh, for the 5G technology, and I think this is going to be a stock that's going to be hitting new one-year highs um, every so often this year and the coming year. Uh, I found another stock that's also related to 5G technology that has been hitting a 52-week high or one-year high. Uh, it's called Cadence Design Systems. Uh, CDNS is the ticker symbol. And uh, I had to do some research on the stock to see uh, why the stock is hitting a 52-week high. Uh, they offer really, really clear solutions related to 5G systems and subsystems. So if uh, 5G technology is going to take off, this is one of those companies uh, that will benefit from the boom of 5G technology. Okay. Uh, again, uh, analysts raised the targets for Cadence Technologies. Uh, Cadence Technology just reported its earnings uh, last quarter and they seem to be doing really really good um, let's switch sectors and what are some of the stocks you would want to uh, watch for if you want to invest in the auto chip industry so auto chips are basically um, semiconductor chips that are made specifically for uh, cars uh, cars are getting more spotter they're getting more connected uh, they're trying to do more more and more activities online with the cloud technology when it comes to auto chips and uh, there are some companies that are specifically designing chips for the auto industry and these companies are doing really well one of those companies is Marvel Technology Group MRVL uh, again I had to do some research go to their website and see what they're all about uh, they make cutting cutting edge technology for a connected car so if you think about the car um, right now, how they're trying to do apps and Spotify and IoT in your car, um, multiply that 10 times and that's going to be the future of a car. It's going to be more connected, especially with um, autonomous driving and it's, more, it's going to be more connected to the cloud, to your house, to the technology you use. Uh, so these companies that are making chips for auto, automotive uh, sector, especially cars, are going to be doing really well. So again, Marvel Technology is one of those stocks that's already hitting a 52-week high. It is relatively cheap at around $25, uh, ticker symbol MRVL. I think this stock is going to do really well in the future. Uh, Zillings, uh, XLNX is the ticker symbol. Uh, again, this stock is at $140. It recently hit a new one-year high. It's been hitting a new one-year high, um, and both Marvel Technology and XLNX came up on my radar uh, last week as well because they hit a new one-year high um, Again, if I I did a little bit of research on uh, Excel and X, this is an article from uh, Motley Fool where they talk about the growth opportunities for this particular stock 
So the three top growth opportunities for the stocks are data centers. Data centers uh, are also on the demand because of all AI and a lot of data that needs to be hosted to support the AI. Um, communications infrastructure, again, like 5G networks. We talked about the 5G technology. And then automotive, we talked about the smarter car chips. So this is one company that is strategically placed itself in three different um, niches and one being data center, the other being 5G networks, and the other being automotive chips. So this company is almost a triple threat. Uh, it is slightly expensive at $140, but uh, think about three different companies put into one. If you think about it that way, this stock is relatively cheap. So this is another stock which I think is gonna benefit uh, immensely from the 5G technology boom and the automotive chip boom. So this company is going to do really well in the future. Uh, let's take a look at the plain old semiconductors. Uh, semiconductors are basically uh, chip manufacturers uh, for your computer, cell phone, whatever it may be. And uh, these are uh, companies like Texas Instruments. So Texas Instruments it is at $118 um, dollars right now. Uh, it recently hit a one-year high. And then I saw an article that was published by Mad Money Kramer. He says, uh, don't wait for the all clear on semiconductor sales to make a bet on Texas Instruments. So semiconductor as a sector is going, uh, is turning around. I think it's gonna be uh, one of those sectors that's gonna catch up for the rest of uh, 2019. And then Texas Instruments is already showing signs of by hitting a new one year high. I think the stock is gonna do really well for the rest of the year as well. Um, and if I go into Texas Instruments, uh, I find a lot of uh, investments in upcoming technology, one being um, electric vehicles. So again, electric vehicles is seems to be the way of the future. Uh, China says almost all the electric vehicles in the future, uh, all the vehicles will be electric by 2020, 2050 or 2035, I'm not sure. But Texas Instruments is one of those companies that's poised and they do uh, chips that are specifically designed for uh, electric cars. So this company is another company to watch for and might be doing really well in the in the near future. Uh, analog devices, again, analog devices is a plain old chip manufacturer, but if I if I, I did some research, went to their website, and, and they're also involved in several sectors, but uh, one of the sector being automotive. Again, any company that has to do with automotive chips of the future and electric vehicles, uh, connected cars is going to be doing really well, and analog devices is one of those companies. Uh, Teradyne, ticker symbol T-E-R, um, recently published its earnings, another semiconductor um, uh, manufacturer, chip manufacturer that is doing really well. Um, they surpassed their Q1 earnings and revenue estimates. I took this article from Zaxx. And uh, again, with, with the whole semiconductor industry or the sector uh, catching up and doing really well, I think this is one of those stocks that's also going to be doing really well for the rest of the year. Now, uh, what are some of the stocks uh, you would want to watch out for if you want to invest in cloud technology? So cloud technology um, has gone mainstream. Uh, we can already see it from uh, Amazon. About 41% of their uh, revenue comes from cloud technology. Right now, Amazon is the king of cloud technology, but um, Oracle um, it recently hit a one-year high. The stock is at $55 which is uh, cheap compared to Amazon. And the reason I'm saying that is because Oracle has two good news um, articles behind it. Uh, a giant fund from Europe is trying to invest in Oracle stock, plus Oracle is trying to strategically pos position itself to be a competition for Amazon when, it's com when it comes to cloud uh, business and cloud solutions. So, um, Again, Oracle is uh, going to switch um, its, its business to cater more towards cloud technology. And I think Oracle has the infrastructure and the employees to go after some of the Amazon money. And uh, if Oracle does it right, I think Oracle is one of those stocks that's going to be doing really well for the rest of the year. Um, Adobe. Uh, Adobe is uh, basically Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop is their best known tool, but Adobe has a lot of tools for creators. And most of their and most of their um, apps are based on cloud technology. So Adobe hit a 52-week high. It's at $281, which is quite up there. But um, again, this is one of those companies that's benefiting really, really well 
from its uh, cloud technology investments. So Adobe is um, also going to do really well because it's positioned itself in the cloud technology sector and uh, it's one of those stocks that you want to watch for. Um, let's uh, take a look at another stock called Accenture, uh, ticker symbol ACN. Uh, the stock's at $180, just hit a one-year high. Um, the, this is a stock that you might not have heard of, but Accenture is um, your third-party outsourcer for any IT solution. So if your company has, uh, if you're a Fortune 500, if you work for a Fortune 500 company, and if your company has outsourced payroll, if your company has outsourced HR, if your company has outsourced any of its departments, it's probably because Accenture um, said, offered them a solution, a cheaper solution, and they decided to go with Accenture. So Accenture's, um, Accenture is one of those companies I think is uh, is offering a lot of value to help cut down costs for American companies and European companies. And again, it's this stock is also a cloud technology play uh, because Accenture just released news that uh, about its relationship with Google Cloud and it's using Google Cloud to do to um, come up with most of its creative solutions. So thinking from thinking about a cloud technology play, you have Oracle, you have you have Adobe, and Accenture is uh, one of those companies is also going after cloud technology by partnering up with Google and coming up with cloud technology solutions. So any company that has to do with cloud technology or cloud technology solutions is going to do really well in the future because that's the way um, that's the easy way to push solutions on a wide scale to consumers if you want to. Okay, let's uh, move to a different sector. Uh, what are some of the stocks you want to watch for if you want to invest in a media company? Um, Disney um, has making a huge news and it just popped and hit a 52 week high last week. It hit a 52 week high again this week uh, and the momentum seems to carry on. Uh, that's partly because Disney said it's going to go after um, Netflix basically by introducing their own streaming service at uh, $6.99 a month and I think it's a really good move and the stock agrees uh, it's hit a new one year high it's an extra source of revenue for Disney and uh, they already have the infrastructure they have they don't have to go purchase content because Disney has a lot of content that it can um, that it can show you they basically own Fox and Marvel so uh, they don't, they're not going to be short of um, content to be able to stream so uh, Disney is uh, sort of expensive right now at $140, uh, but if you get a chance to buy it anywhere at around $120 or $115, I think it's a really good bargain. Um, let's uh, talk a little bit about Comcast. So when I say Comcast, a lot of people think about Comcast as an internet provider uh, and sucky customer service, but uh, recently Comcast has uh, made a purchase uh, of a company called Sky, which is a streaming service in uh, Europe. And Comcast is also positioning itself to be a media company. And recently, uh, media seems to be a really good cash machine if you're able to uh, stream your contact directly to your consumer. And uh, Sky is a European company that does just that. So Comcast went ahead and bought uh, Sky. And uh, because of that, Comcast is at a 52 week high or one year high. And I think it's going to do well uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, let's talk a little bit about utilities. Um, WTR, um, Aqua America, is a company that came up on my radar. Um, uh, if you if you like to invest in utilities, you're probably investing in it because of the dividends uh, that utility uh, companies offer. So again, this is a dividend play, and uh, recently this company um, increased their quarterly dividend rate. Uh, by 9.9%. So I think that's partly why the stock is at a 52 week high, uh, one year high, because uh, people who are looking for dividends are always looking uh, for companies that will keep increasing their dividends uh, uh, quarter over quarter or year over year. And WTR is one of those companies you want to watch for if you want, if you're interested in uh, investing in stocks that gives you dividends. Uh, let's talk about FinTech. Uh, FinTech is basically finance and technology. Um, married together. Uh, 
this happens when uh, in Square, Square is one of those tiny little square things you can put on your mobile phone and you, can, and you can swipe your credit card through it. So that's the happy marriage between technology and finance and uh, fintech is the best of both worlds. So let's take a look at stocks that are under the fintech sector that are, eating, that are hitting a new one year high. Uh, PayPal. Uh, PayPal is, uh, is continuing to hit a one year high. It was on my radar last week, it's on my radar this week. Uh, PayPal st stock prices because PayPal owns uh, Venmo. Uh, if you ha if you haven't heard about Venmo, Venmo is an app uh, that you can easily send money peer to peer. Uh, you can send money to your friend. Uh, you can send money to your lawnmower. You can send money to your grandpa if you want to, uh, just by using the app. As long as the uh, other person also has the app installed, they'll receive the money and they can easily transfer it to their bank. So PayPal is a fintech company by that sense because it has a new app and the analysts are saying that everything that's coming from the app hasn't been accounted into PayPal stock uh, analysis. So I think uh, the PayPal is undervalued at this point just because uh, the revenue that's coming from Venmo is not being taken into account and I think it's going to continue to do really well for the rest of the year. Um, MasterCard also came up on my radar for the 52 week high, one year high and um, I did some research on MasterCard and uh, this article from Investors.com says that MasterCard uh, bought a service called Vise uh, that allows merchants to offer customers a range of credit options both in stores and online uh, by connecting them with multiple lenders. Uh, the way I understand it, it makes your credit approval process a lot smoother and it also increases the options uh, that you get when you apply for credit. So. Um, Analysts say that the space is a $1.8 trillion opportunity and it's a growing trend. So I think MasterCard has uh, done really well with the acquisition business of getting this platform and I think it's going to do really well for the rest of the year. Uh, Visa. Uh, Visa also hit a 52 week high. Uh, the way Visa is playing the fintech industry is uh, being the pioneer of going cashless. Uh, so if you think about not using cash, be Apple Pay, Google Pay, uh, whatever you use, uh, Visa is trying to get in there and be offer innovative technologies to make that happen. So even um, if Apple Pay and Google Pay exist, uh, they might have to pay Visa for some of the technology innovations that Visa is uh, making. So uh, that's partly why Visa is hitting a 52 week high. Um, and uh, I think there's more good news in terms of uh, price gain that's going to come from Visa. Um, now let's talk about strictly finance. So what are some of the stuff that you want to watch out for if you want to invest in the finance sector? Um, uh, American Express. Uh, is a stock that's making a new one-year high. Um, they recently published their um, earnings and analysts say that the American Express sales are strong. Uh, I know at one point in time American Express had some struggles and I think uh, the stock has recovered uh, since and it's going to do really well for the rest of the year. Um, Blackstone Group, uh, BX is the ticker symbol, um, is also making a 52-week high or a one-year high. And I did some research on why that is, and this article is from Bloomberg. Uh, Blackstone bets on costly drug trials that vex even big pharma. Uh, that means that uh, they want to be the, pers the go-to person when big pharma doesn't have enough money to get a new product or new treatment across the finish line. So they want to position themselves um, to be there as a lender for pharmaceutical companies that have done uh, a lot of trials on drugs and new treatment and they just uh, don't have enough resources to get it to commercialization uh, so that they can start selling the drug or the treatment. So Blackstone Group wants to be the number one lender for these pharmaceutical companies if they are struggling to get that product out the door. Um, let's talk a little bit about the US-China trade deal. As you guys uh, might have already heard, uh, US and China are in a pretty big trade war, and there seems to be there seems to be some good news that uh, might come up uh, next week or the week after about US and China like finally coming to terms about uh, the trade situation. Um, so Brazil Foods uh, is uh, a company that's uh, also making a 52-week high, and uh, it's it's kind of convoluted why. 
uh, food company would be making a 52 week high if there's some good news coming up uh, with the US China trade deal. Uh, another example was Tyson Foods. Tyson Foods uh, is an American company, a food company, uh, basically a meat producer uh, that made a 52 week high last week. So uh, when I dug into the news, um, Brazil Food says that like China, China will start certifying meat plants after the US deal. So there's a lot of there's a lot of um, there's a lot of companies that are waiting for this U.S. China trade deal to be um, done and concluded because uh, there's a lot of uh, actions that are being backlogged by this trade war between U.S. and China. One being China certifying new meat plants. So China is a big consumer of pork and meat, and uh, we America and South America exports uh, pork and meat to China. So um, the fact that like the U.S. and China are now in agreement with trade uh, makes it easier for them to export uh, meat. And you can see Tyson Foods and Brazil Foods uh, both uh, into pork and meat manufacturing are hitting a 52-week high. Uh, and this, this might be a good sign. Uh, and what this is telling you is that uh, there's optimism about the U.S.-China trade deal that's coming up next month. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the defense sector. This is military application. Uh, the, the st this is the stock that you have to watch out for if you want to invest in military applications. Uh, Honeywell International is a stock that's hitting a 52-week high or a one-year high. It's at $162, um, and that's because uh, Honeywell has a new technology that uh, that is uh, proprietary for military and it's uh, it's supposed to help with future vertical lift uh, so the way I understand it is that if you have a airplane instead of having a runway you can actually vertically lift the plane and just take off like a helicopter and I think that's uh, very very important for defense and the military um, if they want to if they want to keep innovating and uh, any company that does really well in the defense sector um, is something to watch out for because the military has um, a lot of budget to spend, a lot of money to spend, and uh, Honeywell is one of those companies I think is going to do really well for the rest of the year. Uh, let's talk about consumer staples. Consumer staples are basically your everyday use um, brands that uh, people buy, and uh, one of those brands is basically Colgate Palmolive. Um, now CL is the ticker symbol is hitting a 52 week high and uh, this uh, I think the sector of consumer staples and this includes like Johnson Johnson, Colgate, Palmolive, anything that you would buy on a day to day basis, um, Huggies, uh, any company that uh, are how do I say it are practically are practical applications in your day to day life. I think the sector is going to do really well for the rest of the year. Uh, they just uh, published their Q1 earnings, Colgate Palmolive did, and uh, they're doing really well. I think there's more good news for companies that are uh, similar in the same sector about to come just because of the U.S. economy doing really well and people willing to spend and buy products that they use every day um, and not being frugal about it. Um, again, these are the list of stocks that we talked today. We talked uh, 5G technology, Qualcomm, and Cadence. Auto chip manufacturers, which are Marvel and ZXLNX, uh, semiconductors, Texas Instruments, uh, analog devices, and Teradyne. Uh, cloud technology, we talked about Oracle, Accenture, and Adobe. Media Play, we talked about Disney and Comcast. Utilities, we talked about Aqua America. FinTech, we talked about MasterCard, PayPal, and Visa. Uh, Finance, we talked about American Express and uh, BX, Blackstone Group. Defense, we talked about Honeywell, and then consumer staples, we talked about Colgate Palmolive. Um, again, thank you so much for listening to the video. I, um, I hope that you got something valuable out of this video. Uh, if you have any comments on the stocks uh, that I missed and you want me to talk about it, I would be happy for you to comment on the video below. And I also want to hear from other traders who are out there um giving me feedback on what stocks they're watching and why they're watching it and uh, what are some of the news events that might affect the stock um, again thank you for listening um, cheers